Welcome to the first Sabbath of the new year. We are here to praise God, and the songs that I have picked for this praise session, I would like you to focus on the words. They were, the words have tremendous meaning, especially in these trying times. But first, let us lift our hearts to God. Loving Father, you have spared our lives to see this first Sabbath of the new year. We thank you for how you have kept us in the past, and we trust in you that you would keep us until you call us home. Thank you for the many blessings. Be with the families that are at home. Help them, dear Lord, to participate and be enriched and blessed. In Christ's name, amen.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. I'd like to welcome all of you to the very first Sabbath of year 2021. Happy New Year. And I would like to welcome all our church family and the guests that are joining us online. And I'd uh, like to extend our warmest welcome to all of you. And as we welcome this brand new year, year 2021, may God's special blessing be upon you and your family, and your children, and your loved ones through this year. Year 2020 has been a very hectic year, and as we welcome into, as we start this brand new year, we expect God's blessing, we expect God's love, and His presence in our lives. Even though we cannot be together in, uh, in physically in person in church, we look forward to the time that we can get together very soon. And there is no more worry of this, this distance and viruses and all that's happening. We, we pray that time will come soon where we can get together. And we hope that year 2021 will be that year 
and that time will come soon. And we pray that you, you would experience God's blessing personally, uh, and you experience God's unity and his, his spirit through your prayer and through divine appointments through this year. And we have a few announcements to share with you this morning. Um, small groups, the small group that took a little break will resume our studies and our prayer groups will start this coming Monday on January 4th. And on, uh, we have morning prayer calls from Monday through Friday starting from 6.15 a.m. And on Tuesdays, we have women's midweek prayer group starting at 12.15 p.m. And on Wednesdays, we have Desire of Ages group starting at 7 p.m. Thursdays, we have Women's Fellowship Group, uh, fellowship group at 7 p.m. So remember all those groups that we have. And also, uh, I want you to know that we have Sabbath School lesson books available for pickup here at church. So if you want to come and pick up a hard copy, the books are available in the lobby, and your names for, are on there on the books for the special like the teacher's edition and so on. So they are there. And so please come for the next few weeks to come pick it up so they can, you can have your own copy. I would like to, I would like to thank Sally Reddy for organizing uh, all those books, ordering and, and naming them and, and putting them so that you can, uh, they can be available for you to pick them up. And that's not an easy work. And she volunteered to do that. So thank you, Sally, for doing all that work. And also, uh, 10 Days of Prayer, we'll have a special uh, announcement from Elder Tate. He will come in and give a special uh, announcement for that. So give a, think of, uh, give a little minute for that until he comes up and do, does a special welcome announcement for, announcement for that. Next announcement that we have is Equip to Serve. So our conference has been training the leaders and the lay leaders and the pastors in a, in a very different way, in a special way. And Equip to Serve is that, uh, that event that we'll be having. So this is on January 9, 2021, so that's next week. Um, starting from 3 p.m. to 5.30 p.m., you have to register to be able to go online to watch this. And the things that are on there are here on the slides. So some of them are... So Adirt Sabbath School uh, and, and also Adventist Education with Superintendent and also um, Adventist um, Institute and Achievement uh, Curriculum and so on. So, and also we have Bilingual Children's Sabbath School with, um, with the presenters and also we have uh, Child Protection and Risk Management and church, I can't really read the small fonts there. Church Clerk Part 1 uh, with David Johnson. And we have community service and deacons, deaconess, and also disability ministry and elders ministry, greeters, hospitality, and uh, junior high ministry, and also junior children's Sabbath school and kid kindergarten primary children's Sabbath school and live stream. And the next one, men's ministry and pathfinders, um, investiture and prayer ministry and prison ministry, religious liberty, women's ministry, young adult ministry, and youth ministry. And so we have so many different ministries and classes that you can sign up and uh, listen to. And this is free to any church member, anybody who is interested in. So please go online, go to um, go online to equip to serve, and you can sign up for that. And um, you have time to sign up for a, a little more than a week now. So please go ahead and sign up so you can, um, you can get access to the Equip to Serve program that is organized by our conference that has been going on every year. Okay, and communion, January 30th. We are planning to have our first virtual communion on January 30th. Glad to let you know that the communion packet has arrived. And I will show you the instructions how to use, and you need to come pick them up from church. So starting from next Sabbath, you can come pick them up. You can call me. I can arrange. You can come pick, pick them up at my house or here at church, however you want. If you want me to come drop them off at your place, I can do that as well. So you have until before January 30th, you need to have them. So we have about 
four weeks to prepare, so please come and pick them up here at church or give me a call so we can arrange a pickup so that you can have it ready for, your, um, for the communion service that's happening on January 30th. Book ministry. So Elder um, Becky and um, Cynthia, Jennifer Ramos, um, and Jessica and Helder, and many other people, including uh, Zenya, have been distributing these books to different uh, neighbors in our community. And if you want to be part of this, uh, this ministry, book ministry, that are going door to door and leaving the condensed version of Great Controversy, especially at this time, uh, they're available. So please contact either Cynthia, Elder Becky, or uh, Jennifer Ramos to be included in this group of ministry um, that's going on in our neighborhood. Okay, I would like to invite Elder Tay to come up and share about 10 days of prayer. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to the 10 Days of Prayer 2021. We believe prayer is the birthplace of revival. God has worked so many miracles in the past years as we have sought him together in prayer and fasting. The Holy Spirit has brought about conversions, renewed passion for evangelism, revived churches, and healed relationships. In 2 Chronicles 7.14, it says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Also in Jeremiah 29.13, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Joel 2.32, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. James 4.8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Revelation 3.20, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. Wherever you are in life, now, God is closer than you think. He wants to pour out his blessing on your family, your church, your community, and your world. So starting January 6th through January 16th, we will be starting our 10 days of prayer. Next slide. For the 10 days of prayer, we will be having a sermon series uh, on prayer, live stream, for January 2, 9, and 16 by Pastor Bay. Next slide. Every day at noon, we encourage all of you, not just our church here, local church, but the worldwide church as well, will be praying uh, during these 10 days. So every day at noon, we want you to stop and pray at the same time for the same things. And here are the things that we want to, you to pray for. the Holy Spirit for our own self-revival and church revival, for the Holy Spirit-led prayer groups and ministry revival, for Holy Spirit-led church plans and leadership revival, for individual family revival and our pastors. Next slide. We also encourage you to write a prayer list. Create your own specific prayer list of three to five people in our church. So even though we're not together here, uh, just try to close your eyes and remember the time you were here and just remember picturing people, your, your family members in this church in different locations. And maybe you might think of, oh, the person that was sitting in row three, oh, I could remember seeing Jennifer or I could remember seeing Godfrey or whoever and just pray for them during this time. We also encourage you to call a friend and pray together at least every day uh, and connect with them and maybe do a prayer chain where you 
call someone and pray with them and encourage them to pray for someone else and call someone else as well. Next slide. We're going to start this off January 6th also with a, a Zoom meeting uh, on the day one and also a Zoom meeting on day 10 to see how we all participated in, and received the blessings that God has for us. So on January 6 at 6 p.m., there will be a short Zoom meeting on, on how to get started with the, the prayer, 10 days of prayer. And on January 16 at 6 p.m., we will conclude. Next slide. We will also be gearing or focusing our prayer meetings um, that we already have going during this time on our 10 days of prayer as well. Same with the Women's Prayer Call Group and the Ellen White Book Night as well, as well as Women's Fellowship Night. So everything will be geared during this January 6th through 16 on the 10 days of prayer. Next slide. So we, we encourage all of you to engage in the 10 days of prayer. And uh, there will be, we have already sent out messages on, on email uh, describing where you could get all the information. There are personal, um, personal uh, everyday um, lessons that have been already prepared. So you, you could read through that and then participate in all the things that are happening in our church. Next slide. We also encourage you to share the blessings or share the miracles that God, God is going to pour out during this time as well. So you could text it or you could email it to our church so we could share it with the whole church family as well. So I'm very excited about this 10 days of prayer that's coming before us. And I'm excited to see what God is going to do for our church and for the worldwide church during this time. So. I pray that you will all participate and be blessed as well. Thank you. Amen. Happy New Year, San Diego Central Church. I pray that you have a blessed, happy new year, not by the, uh, the calendar, but which, which is time of uh, the chronos in Greek, but by the year of the Lord's favor, which is time of kairos in Greek. We had to welcome this year uh, in chaotic circumstances. But I believe our God is proclaiming the year of the Lord's favor for us. <clears throat> On the first Sabbath of the year, I want to share a message of, the, of New Year through <clears throat> one of my favorite songs. This song has it all. Simple and beautiful wording of lyrics and great message and a perfect rhyme and also amazing tune. In this time of uh, suffering, we need, we need the Lord who speaks to us. In this short song, Jesus Christ himself proclaims the victory over sufferings, sacrifice, mocking, and being beaten, and even death. It carries the whole gospel, holistic gospel, the cross, the resurrection, and the second coming. Even though I won't be able to, for, for the time being, able to meet you. I won't be able to hug you. I won't be able to eat with you. But our Savior, Jesus Christ, is with you and hug you and eat with you. 
and give the victory he already has owned. So, thinking about people who are in sick bed, thinking about the people who are disheartened, thinking about the people who are suffering from difficulties and pains, rise again. You rise again. May the victory become yours this year because Jesus already won. Rise again. <clears throat> at me where you stand go ahead and say it is me that they will come when you will see Still the same. Go ahead and bury me, but very soon I will be free.
For the tithes and offering today, it's for the local church offering. Let us have a prayer for the offering. Our Father God in heaven, we realize that you are the source of our blessing. As we start this new year, we give the blessings that you've given us back to you and claiming the promise that you've given us that you will bless us. And Lord, as we look forward to the great blessings that you are going to give us financially and physically and spiritually, we thank you for who you are and what you are doing to us. May you would please take this offering that we give to you, bless it, multiply it, and use it to, to hasten your coming and to proclaim this message to, this, to the ends of this world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. church family, if you can, whether you're here or at home, to kneel with me as we pray. Our loving and most heavenly Father, on this first Sabbath of the year 2021, we come before you on bended knees, worshiping you because you are worthy of our worship this morning. We thank you for the grace that you've shown on all of us. We thank you that you have risen again and given us confidence in who you are. Father, as we look back on 2020, we want to thank you for walking with us and carrying us through the difficult times. Lord, we continue to pray for those that have lost loved ones in 2020. Lord, be with them in a special way. Continue to carry them through. Lord, 
We pray for those that are still ill, those that are still falling uh, to the virus that's out there, Lord. We pray that you will protect our members and protect all those around us, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to provide comfort and healing where it's needed. Lord, we, we not only just pray for our church members, but we pray for our country and the world where people are, have lost so much. And we just want you to be there and help them to turn to you because you are the answer for everything. And we know that you will give us and provide for all our needs. Help us to realize that this world is not our home and that there is a place that you have prepared for us. And we long for that, that time when you come to take your people home. And we know that it is soon. Help us to prepare our hearts, prepare each one of us to be ready for that day. Father, this, this coming week, starting Wednesday, we will be starting our 10 days of prayer with our church members here and our church members around the world as we come before you, asking for you to pour out your Holy Spirit upon each one of us, our church members, our church leaders, our church pastors. We just ask that you will revive our church, create in us the desire and fire to share the good news so that your coming will be hastened. Lord, we thank you already for what you will do in the coming weeks ahead. And we pray that you will continue to give confidence in our members and that through the trials we go through, we know that you are strengthening us and making us stronger so that we will have more confidence in you and to put more faith in you. And we know that you will carry us through anything that is before us. And Lord, this morning, we ask that as Pastor Bay starts his mini-series on prayer, that you will send your Holy Spirit Give him your words to speak and ignite in each one of us the passion to pray daily, all day long, trusting in you and walking with you every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's scripture is Luke 11, 1. One day in a place where Jesus had just finished praying, one of his disciples requested, Lord, teach us to pray. Just as John taught his disciples. May the Lord add an extra special blessing to the reading of this word. Happy New Year, everyone. Feliz Año Nuevo. Happy Sabbath, everyone, and Happy New Year. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I love this idea of uh, family scripture reading. You can see the whole family together. It's just great to see them in the videos, even though they can't be here in person. This very first Sabbath of year 2021 is a special one because year 2020 has ended. And now we are starting a new chapter in our lives. Yes, it was, to be honest, crazy and strange year. There had been so many changes in our society, in our church, in our schools, in our economy. There's been lockdowns and 
no human contact and distancing and so many deaths and painful hospital, hospital visits where you can't go see your a family member that are in pain, that are dying, that are giving birth. You couldn't be there. It was just a very strange year. And many people losing their family members and their loved ones and not being able to come together and have a fellowship. Even at church, we couldn't do that. And it was a very uh, strange year. But as we came to an end of that year, as we start this new year, even though the numbers are still high, and the virus that's going around is still spreading uh, a lot. And around the world, it's, it's still uh, very difficult. But we have hope that this year will be better. This, will be a, this year will be different than year 2020. And with God's help, we would do this together. And we would be united. And by God's grace, this will be a better year. And we have this hope in our heart as we start this new year, and we have this, this desire in our heart. And I was thinking what to share as we start this um, new year, and I decided to uh, speak on the, um, the point of, of prayer. I want us to focus on prayer. I want us to study on the, the topic of prayer. So, Prayer is nothing new. I mean, we've been praying in our lives, all our lives, and we've been praying every, every single week at church, and we've been praying every single day. And what is there for us to learn something new about prayer? And I decided to uh, talk about the basics of how we pray and the teaching that God has given us how to pray. So we are going to start this January, this brand new year, with the Lord's Prayer. With that in mind, um, I want to talk about this, the Lord's Prayer. And there are two places in the Bible that talks about the Lord's Prayer. First, in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. And the second place is Luke 11, 1 through 4. And the scripture reading that um, the Burner family read for us is addressing the Luke um, chapter 11, verses 1. Um, when this is important for us to understand the concept and, and the background of what this means of this Lord's Prayer, because it was done twice. And when the disciples asked Jesus, please teach us how to pray, that, um, that ha has a special meaning, because let me ask you this question. When the disciples asked Jesus, can you please teach us how to pray, did the, did the disciples know how to pray already? Or did they not know how to pray? When they asked Jesus, Jesus, please teach us how to pray, they knew already how to pray. Why? How did they know how to pray? Because they grew up praying, right? They're Jewish people, and they knew how to pray. All they have seen was their rabbis, their teachers, their scribes, their religious leaders, they all prayed every single week. Every Sabbath they go to a synagogue, they will see people praying. That's how they grew up. Do you think they, they, do you think they prayed at home? Yes, they prayed at home. If you read the, read the Bible, the story of Daniel, story of different prophets, different people, will tell you that they prayed, Jewish people, by default, they need to pray how many times a week? How many, how many times a day? At least three times a day. Morning, noon, and evening. They pray three times a day. So if you talk about praying, they know how to pray. And the disciples come to Jesus and ask, Jesus, teach us how to pray. Do you think we know as Adventists how to pray? As Christians, do we know how to pray? Yes, if you talk about prayer, we do know how to pray. We've been praying all our lives, right? Morning and evening. And we've been praying at church. We know how to do community prayer, intercessory prayer, personal prayer, group prayer. And, and there are so many different kinds of prayer. We have called uh, ABCs of prayer. We have Acts prayer. We have um, 
And now we do like virtual prayer, Zoom prayer. We have so many different things that we pray for. We pray 10 days of prayer. So we do know about prayer, but why did the disciples ask Jesus, teach us to pray? And what did Jesus teach them how to pray? That's what we want to study the first few weeks of January. And as we start off this new new series of prayer, we'll talk about Lord's Prayer, and then at the end of this, uh, we'll do a communion service together, a virtual communion on January 30th, and we'll start off this year, brand new year, with the Lord's Communion. And they, the disciples asked Jesus, teach us how to pray, not because they didn't know how to pray, but because they saw something different in Jesus' prayer. Every time Jesus would pray, they, it looked something different. There was something different, something special about Jesus' prayer. And that's why the disciples asked them. Because when they saw the rabbis prayed, when they saw the priests prayed, it was just like any prayer they have seen. It was beautifully written. It was ritual. It had formal prayer. And it, they, they, would stood, they would stand in the middle of the marketplace. They would pray a beautiful prayer, a long prayer. And they were used to that, and they know what that meant. They memorized the scripture. They knew how to pray. But when Jesus prayed, there was something different. What was that? That call for the disciples to ask Jesus to pray. And the reason why it was different is because Jesus prayed differently. Here, that's from the Mount of Blessing, page 103, says this. When the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray, Jesus didn't teach them a new prayer. It was a repeat of what he taught them before. So when we think about, when we study about prayer, it is not something about we are learning a new concept of prayer. It's not about something completely different. It is the same. It's a repeat of what we already know. But there is a deeper meaning in that prayer. There is something different because we find new meaning in the same prayer that we've been doing, same prayer that the Bible has been teaching. So in verse 1, here it says, Jesus had just finished praying, and then the disciples asked them, teach us to pray. And disciples often found Jesus praying in solitude. And this is a very, everybody knows this. Disciples, when they come back from their talking or visiting their homes or, or going on their mission, when they come back, Jesus, in his solitude, he'll be praying on his knees, and he'll be praying by himself, and when the disciples see Jesus, they will see his face shining with the glory of heaven. And they will see that he has power in him. And after a long day, and he's tired, he is tired, he's hungry, he's exhausted, and he needs to rest. And the disciples think, you know what, Jesus, we need to send these people home and we need to take a break. You need to take a break. You are tired. You need to take, take it easy. And when you see him at the end of a long, exhausted day, what he does is not he wouldn't go there to eat. He wouldn't go there to take a nap or sleep or relax. He would go to pray. After a long day, after you are so tired, exhausted, what do you want to do? What's the first thing that you want to do? You want to eat, yes, because <laughs> you are tired and hungry, yes. <laughs> Eating is what you want to do. Or maybe you want to sleep because you are just so tired. You don't even have strength to eat. You just want to go and sleep, crash into your bed and sleep. Or maybe you want to take a hot shower and relax. Or maybe listen to music. Or some people may want to just relax and chat with somebody else because chatting for you is relaxing. Or some people want to just go out and just exercise because that's how you relieve your stress, right? That's what we want to do. Some people want to go and eat something sweet like ice cream or cookie or something sweet. Or whatever that may be, we have different ways of, of venting or relaxing or rejuvenating and gaining energy. For Jesus, though, what was his source of energy? It wasn't eating. I can tell you that. 
It wasn't sleeping because he didn't sleep. Rather, he would go and find a, a solitude place, a quiet place, and he would do what? He would pray. And his prayer was source of his strength. And that's why the disciples asked him, Jesus, teach us to pray because your prayer is different than the rabbi's prayer. Your prayer is different than the priest's prayer. Your prayer is different than what I have been praying. Teach me how to pray so that I can pray like you pray. Because when you pray, there is power. There is something different. Friends, do you want to get to know the prayer that Jesus prayed? That's something that would... That would, that would Um, give you strength instead of eating, instead of sleeping, instead of even listening to music, exercising, or doing something else better than a hot shower, better than your sleep. That's the kind of prayer you just did. We need to know what kind of prayer that, that is. And we need to do the same. But here, uh, here's a quote that I want to share with you from Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, page 102. Paragraph 2, it's on the screen. It says, But as he returned from the hours of prayer that closed the toilsome day, they marked the look of peace upon his face, the sense of refreshment that seemed to pervade his presence. It was from hours spent with God that he came forth morning by morning to bring the light of heaven to men, disciples had come to connect his hours of prayer with the power of his words and work, works. So here, disciples saw that Jesus, when every time he came out from this hours of prayer that he spent, the communion with God, then he will come forth bringing light from heaven, bringing power from heaven, bringing the atmosphere of heaven, bring, bringing peace and refreshment from heaven. And disciples wanted that. Friends, do we want that in us? Do we want the same desire in us? I hope and pray, as you start this brand new year, I pray that this will be your wish as well. This will be your New Year's resolution. God, I want this. I want what Jesus had. I want the same thing in me. So as you start this brand new year, we should have the same desires that the disciples had. May we see, behold the glory that is shown on the face of Jesus and say, Jesus, I want the same power that you have after your prayer. Whatever you have, I want it too. May this will be our wish and our desire. As we start off this new January, as we start this new year with the 10 days of prayer, may we have the same wish that what Jesus had be in us. And uh, we need to sense the need. Disciples felt the need. They said, you know what? We've been praying all our lives, and what Jesus is doing is different. And they saw the need. They sensed the need. Do we feel the need? Do we think we need to change our prayer lives? There is something that needs to revive. That needs to take place. Because I pray, my prayer goes up to heaven, but it reaches the ceiling and it comes right back down. When I pray, I pray the first few sentences and then I repeat the same thing over and over again. My prayer, it doesn't really go very far. It's, I pray for many, many years. I pray for so long, but then my prayer is the same. And yes, God does answer my prayer sometimes, but it's, I don't feel the power in my prayer. Disciples felt the same. And we need to sense the need to do something different. We need to sense the need that, Jesus, you need to teach us how to pray. You need to do something so that we can pray the way how you prayed. Do you want this? Do you feel this? We need to sense this need. And going to now the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 9, and this is how he prays, you know, the Lord's Prayer. It says, Our Father... Richard in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
And my sermon title today is Our Father. And the very first word that comes out from the mouth of Jesus when he says, okay, I'll, I'll teach you how to pray. And the very first word that comes in the Lord's Prayer is what word? Our. Our. An English Bible, right? Our. But do you know what the Greek Bible says? Is patre humon. The very first word is father, actually. Father. Okay. Is God our father? Yes, he is our father. But was he our father when we are in sin? No, because the Bible does say, yes, God is our father. He created us. But when we sin, the Bible says, you sons of the devil. <laughs> If we sin, what happens is that Satan becomes our father. He becomes in charge of our lives. He becomes our father. That's what the Bible says. So yes, God has never abandoned us. Abandoned us. And the story of the prodigal son will tell you this all about it. When the son left father, the father was still waiting for him, and he still was his father. But the prodigal son said, you know what? I, I'm no longer your, your son. Call me a servant. Call me your servant. But the father said, no, come back. I still make you my son. And he reinforced his relationship with him. And he gave him his ring, gave him his coat, gave him his shoes, and say, well, you have left, but I never abandoned you. I never abandoned you. you you're still my son. So God the Father is still our, our father, but when we leave God, Satan becomes our father. It doesn't mean that God left us to be orphans. But we need to really know when we call our father, we need to know that we are reclaiming, reassuring, reclaiming this relationship that God is our father and he bought us back. That's what the relationship, the restoration takes place. So the very first word you just taught in his prayer, this prayer of power, is that call heavenly father your father. That's the very first word. That's the very first thing that you just taught. Our Father, but actually, it's actually Padre, Pater, Humon. That's the very first word. Because Hebrew 2.11 says, For Jesus is not ashamed to call them, call us, what? Brothers. So, Jesus, God, is asking us to connect, to call God the Father, our Father meaning Jesus is becoming our brother, right? But Jesus is also our father because he is God as well. So that, that relationship is interesting, but basically God is our father. We call God the Father our father. So every time we pray this prayer, every time we pray Heavenly Father, Father God, when you pray that prayer, that means that divine adoption takes place. We call God Father. We've been doing this all our lives, and this becomes very uh, meaningless. It, it becomes very uh, dry. And it becomes not, it doesn't have any meaning. But if you actually think about it, when we call our Heavenly Father, that means we are reclaiming this adoption because we've been lost through sin. And now God is inviting us back into that relationship of father and son, this relationship. Do you want to reestablish this relationship? What we need to do is we need to pray. And as God, call God Father. Just call out His name, Father. That's all you need to do. When you do that, God reinstates, reestablishes, reconnects this adoption relationship. And we call him God, Father, and he calls us son and daughter. And that is the very first thing you just taught to his disciples. Do you call anybody Father? 
you don't call anybody father. My kids, they call me dad, father. They don't call anybody else in the world, seven billion people, father. Well, half of them are women, so just <laughs> six and a half. <laughs> but <laughs> they don't call anybody else father. They just call me father. Why? Because I am their dad. Biological dad, and I'm part of raising them. I'm teaching, I taught them how to walk. Well, my wife also, but I taught them how to walk. I taught them how to work in some ways, study. So there are so many things that I'm involved in their lives. That's what a fatherhood or, or uh, being a parent means. But we are living in this world where a lot of bad things happened. Sometimes the father is not there. The father passed away. Very unfortunate, but father passed away when they were young, and they, the kids grow up without a father. Or sometimes separation takes place, and the parents get divorced, and uh, the kids don't really get to see their parents both at the same time, or not in the same house, or in the same relationship. Or sometimes there is this abuse taking place. Sometimes the dad is probably the worst person to be around with the kids. Sometimes there is law enforcement taking place and, and the court cases. And it's just a mess of what's happening in our family relationships. That's the most important unit of a relationship that God has created. And Satan is after that. He's attacking that family relationship so much so in a way that that. So many families in the world right now today have this relationship broken up. We don't call someone who had uh, fathered or, or uh, uh, begat children and raised them and modeled them and mentored them a father. We sometimes call someone who begot them or raised them or mentored them. They're all different people. Sometimes you, have, you call different people, like either a biological father or a stepdad or an adopted dad or like a godfather. We have different people, not one person. It should be this and that and that, but it's this or that or that. We have this problem in our society today because of lots of problems that we have in this world. Because of death, sickness, separation, problem, and, and so on and so forth. But that's not the intention that God has given. And when we call Father, when we call God our Father, He is all in. He wants to give us life, and He wants to mentor us, He wants to raise us, He wants to provide us, He wants to protect us. He, he wants to do everything for us as a father is supposed to do. Do you want Heavenly Father to be your father? Then offer a simple prayer. Just say, Father God, God the Father. When you call his name in your sincere heart, that's what God does. He is going to be your father. That's how what Jesus taught us. And our first step of prayer is to accept God as our Father and trust Him that He loves us, guides us, protects us, leads us, blesses us, provides for us, and is saving us. And you know what? When we call God our Father, you know what happens automatically? Whoever else is calling God as their Father, we become what to those people? Brothers and sisters, we become siblings. We become one family with the whole group of people that are calling God the Father. If you have someone who has a different skin color than you do in that group, or if you have someone else who speaks a different language, someone who likes different food, someone who has different smell than you do, someone who puts on different clothes than you do, guess what? We still are one family because we call same God as our Father. That differences, petty differences, we need to put them aside and we need to become one. We become one family when we pray that prayer, our Father. And 
When you think about this, this there is so much in, in the Lord's Prayer. Okay, I'll just say this, and I'll have to save up the rest of the uh, study for the next week. But by parenting your children, you set an example to your children. What I mean is this. By becoming a dad, you set an example. Every time your children pray the prayer, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, your children have a set of, an, have a set of ideas of who the f- Heavenly Father is like from seeing their physical dad. What I mean is that when I pray the prayer, Our Heavenly Father, my pre notion of Heavenly Father, my God, is from my relationship of me and my physical dad, my father. Was my father perfect? No. But he's been there. He gave birth to me, well, through my mom and my dad. He gave birth to me. And then he was there, taught me uh, so many different things. He taught me how to drive. He taught me how to ride skate. Uh, He taught me how to change engine oil. He taught me those things. There are many things that he didn't teach me. (laughs) Uh, There were a lot of things that he taught me in the wrong way. He was a very strict dad, and he was angry a lot of times. He wasn't there when I needed him a lot of times. And he, as as a Korean dad, and as you can see, a very many Korean dads, especially in Korea, they would never say I love you to their children. They, they show it to you, but they never say it verbally. And they never really give you hugs. It's, so I learned to do it differently. I tell my children I love them. I give them hugs all the time. I try to do differently. Am I perfect dad? I don't think so. But I try to be, uh, show a good example because I know I learn that being a good dad would give children a sense of who the Heavenly Father is. A lot of people, when you ask them, when they ask them, well, I don't like how the Bible portrays the picture of God as your father. Because their father, to be honest, had been the terrible person. First of all, their father was never around. Or sometimes abusive, very violent, lying all the time, or uh, beating them up, or beating their mother up, or taking them, selling them for human trafficking. I mean, you imagine it. There are so many different things. So when they, when they imagine Heavenly Father, they're thinking, they're picturing their physical, personal, biological, or our stepdad that they have, and their picture is not pretty. So my challenge to you, all the men out there, especially all the dad out there, is that what you do, the way how you parent your children shows them, at least to your children, who they see the father uh, when they see, when they see um, Heavenly Father. So you have a very important role. And I pray that you would pray to God to model an example, um, Heavenly Father, as much as you can. And try to be a loving dad, providing, protecting, caring, and, and loving dad that you need to be and you should be. And I pray that you all, we all, be the same way. I, need, I, I have one more page to go, but I'll have to finish this. Hallowed be thy name is, is my next topic, but I'll have to share that next week. Please come back next week. This is a very interesting study of what it means to hallow God's name and respect God's name. But I pray that you will all um, go ahead and study the, the Lord's Prayer. Go home today and study Matthew chapter 6, Luke chapter 11, and read what it means to, to meditate upon that. And also go back to the, the Ellen White's book, Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, chapter, The Lord's Prayer. 
Go back. It's about page 101, 102. Please go there and read it. And we'll be studying this together for the next few weeks. And it's such a rich blessing in it. And we'll be studying this together. So please keep that in mind. And as, we, as I wrap my uh, sermon today, I want us to realize the need of the spiritual revival. Just as the disciple has seen the difference in, the Jesus, in Jesus' prayer, we need to see the prayer that, that can have, the potential power that is lying underneath the prayer that we can have. Our prayer shouldn't be just a, a rep- repetition of prayer or just saying the prayer because we have learned how to pray this way. Our prayer should have power. Our, sh- our prayer should give us power, rejuvenation. At least it should give us the, this, this strength. After you, your long day of, of tiring, a long day of, of hunger, long day of work, you, your first thought is, oh, I want to go home and just relax and eat and, and, and watch TV and look at my smartphone and see my family. No, our thought should be, the first thought, after a long day of long work, I wish I can just go back and just kneel down and pray, and that will give me strength. Can we experience that kind of prayer? My prayer is that we will have that kind of prayer. We will experience that kind of prayer as Jesus prayed, as he experienced. And others may see the difference in us when we pray. Do you want to have that kind of prayer in your prayer life? May God bless all of us as we journey into this Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. Our Father God in heaven, we thank you for giving us this brand new year. As we start this new year off with the series on prayer, especially the Lord's Prayer, we want to have the same prayer, prayer life in our heart. We want to have the power of prayer that Jesus experienced. We want to have this desire as the disciples had. When you pray this prayer, give us this strength. Renew, us, renew in us the strength that you have given to Jesus. Help us to have this prayer. It's not a different prayer. It is the same prayer that you have taught your disciples that has been taught throughout the Bible. It is the same prayer, but help us to find deeper meaning in this prayer and help us to learn to pray in this special way, in this new way. And may you bless us so that we will experience this power and strength in renewing power in this Lord's Prayer. Help us to call you our Father. Help us to renew this strength and this relationship. Help us to reconnect. Help us to turn away from this relationship from the devil as our Father to our Heavenly Father as our Father as this adoption takes place, Lord. Please bless our prayer lives. Help us to experience this power in our prayer lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Praise team, please come on up.
Thank you for joining our live stream worship. Uh, even though I can't see you, I know you are there and I know you joined us, so thank you for doing so. It's a blessing to have worship with you. Remember that our prayer meetings start, resume back on this coming Monday, and also 10 days of prayer starts this Wednesday. So please keep that in mind and please join the prayer group. Until I see you next week, may God bless you. Have a happy Sabbath. Happy New Year.